hi my name is sandy baird and this is our monthly show called what's happening and today i have as a guest the lawyer kurt made a who's often on the show with us to talk about legal cases and public events and today we're going to be talking about the legal case but also the political kind of case of Julian Assange and getting an update on his whereabouts and what's happening in his case as everyone perhaps knows maybe not that Julian Assange has been kept in jail in London England and Belmarsh prison for years facing charges of espionage in the United States and it's a curious case he has been in jail for what other people call publishing material because he is a journalist with WikiLeaks and he did publish classified information about the United States correct That's I don't know correct. how to put it exactly so Kurt is here to talk about who he is what's happened to him and the legal consequences of his case. So, hi, Kurt. Hey, Sandy. Uh, thanks for having me. So, what's going on? First of all, maybe you can say a little bit about who Julian Assange is. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, well, uh, Julian, uh, Mr. Assange is a uh, is an Australian citizen mm -hmm. uh, who spends a good part of his time in Europe, or has spent much of his time in Europe. His, uh, his background is uh, he's considered one of the world's greatest computer hackers since he was uh, in his early 20s, late teens. Uh, to provide some people context, uh, so Mr. Assange was, has been in and out of the uh, Australian legal system uh, for uh, crimes of hacking, uh, but then he's also been resurrected in Australia in many cases because he also assisted law enforcement uh, in Australia to catch uh, pedophiles and people who were uh, accused of sexual molestation. And uh, he did that with the Australian... Sure, uh, local de deputies, police, uh -huh, uh -huh. in cases that they were working because of his masterful knowledge of uh, getting into um, encrypted computer programs. Mm -hmm. And this was when he was in his you know, early to mid-20s. Uh, so, so bright guy in terms of his skills with respect to computers. Uh, and again, it has probably been on both sides of the legal system, even locally in Australia, as a helper. And an enforcer. Uh, right, and also as someone who is claimed to have uh, breached uh, privacy and security mm -hmm. protocols mm -hmm. in Australia. Uh, okay, so what's his, why is he, he's in Belmarsh Prison, a high security prison in London, right? That's correct. So how'd he get there? What happened okay, to Julian so let's, Assange? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the route yeah, that uh, yeah. ended in, in Belmarsh right. for Mr. Assange. Uh, in 2006, uh, Mr. Assange, uh, Mr. Assange uh, established a company along with a couple of other uh, journalists mathematicians mm -hmm. uh, and um, some other um, social justice warriors as they're called now mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's a pejorative but uh, to establish a company called WikiLeaks a company a company yeah uh -huh. the, the 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 objective of WikiLeaks when it was formed it was uh, the phil philosophical underpinnings was to expose hypocrisy of government of government and, and corporations even occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, where um, and and through that exposure, through the you know through the internet, through the uh, the online world, uh, to force change it's, in behavior, right? Okay, right and okay. hopefully to reduce behavior abuse. Of governments, governments, corporations, and people probably. Yeah, and of course people mm -hmm. are you know uh, are involved in corporations and in governments. So it's to it's to effectuate change through exposure. So to reduce the amount of hypocrisy, uh, abuse, lies, uh, and hopefully by exposing you know, powerful people in, in the digital world now, mm -hmm. through, the digital, through digital means, that, that would effectuate change. Social change. Social change. Right. Uh, uh, and that was called WikiLeaks. That's, yeah, so that it was is a called publishing WikiLeaks. sort of company. 
It's yeah, but completely online. You know, uh -huh. so they don't they don't issue uh, unlike Penguin yeah, unlike a or, newspaper. or you know um, Simon and Schuster. They're mm -hmm. not publishing books mm -hmm. or newspapers. It's this is you know digital access. Okay. Yeah, and what they often did was they would get sometimes by anonymous sources uh, or through tips, they would get uh, large hordes of information. And essentially, just put it out there to the digital world right. for mass consumption. Basically, anyone who has a cell phone or a computer right. or has access to internet would be able to um, learn about what was in prior being... times. Yeah, that would have been a, the function of newspapers, correct? That's like, correct. like, like somebody media. would give all this. In, Me right. Media. media Absolutely. Period. You're right. 100%. But, Absolutely. And it was never considered a crime for a newspaper or another media to publish it, correct? Well, uh, depends on where you're talking about. That's what I mean. But I'm talking, talking strictly about. under the law. I well, mean. Well, look, I mean, you know, could the New York Times publish uh, if they got a inkling in 1940? one or two, forgive me if I get the date wrong, of what was going to happen at D-Day uh, if they got, wow. you know, I, I, I don't think that would have been allowed uh, in advance of June well, 6th, you know, that year. But, uh, you know, but for the most part, uh, certain types of information was protected under the First Amendment of the United okay, States so, Constitution. And if you wanted to challenge that that newspaper did something wrong, you'd have to go to court about it and allege something or other. And that might be a violation of the First Amendment, is what you're saying. Perhaps, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, there, are, there are exceptions. You know, one yeah. of the charges against Mr. Assange is a violation of the 1917 law, the Espionage okay, Act. Okay. What is the Espionage well, the Act? Because it's still in effect. It, it right? is indeed. Now, Sandy. in 1917, I imagine it had something to do with World War One. Right. Correct. Good, good okay. Guess. What? Yeah. Absolutely. So 1917, uh, the United States was about to gear up to right. uh, get involved itself uh, into the actual ground, you know, fighting of the First World War. Correct. And right. uh, there were there was an anti-war right. movement in the United States. Big one. Yeah, I mean, some of the notable characters, Eugene Debs. Eugene Debs. Yeah. Right. Right. Also, a um, person who was convicted under the Espionage Act of 1917. So the Espionage Act. The purpose of it was to foster an environment to prosecute World War I on the Critics. part of the United States. Critics well, of the by, war? Yeah, well, foster an environment by, you know, placing uh, a, uh, a gag order, essentially, on critics, like, yeah, you, correct, like you said. Correct, correct. Uh, so anything that could be perceived as a uh, attempt to impact recruitment of military personnel mm -hmm. uh, to uh, thwart military operations, and it's a, it's a very vague Just and broad sure, sure. definition like the of draft. What, what's considered th thwarting yeah. a military yeah. operation. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, aiding and abetting the enemy. perceived enemies of mm -hmm. the United States during a time of war, right? Uh, specifically. Uh, okay, so during the time of war, that's during interesting. The time, well, too. but that's one factor. That's yeah. not yeah, you know, yeah, but you it know, is a factor. It, yeah, if you hit any of those that I mentioned, yeah. and there are a couple more, uh, you know, you're you're basically considered, you know, having violated that act. So would the Supreme Court? Uh, there was a case, of course, because one can argue, you know, we we have the Bill of Rights in this country un enshrined in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. The First Amendment provides us, you know, freedom of press, freedom of speech. Right. So one would think, well, I mean, that doesn't sound like very, you know, First Amendment D. Uh, so um, the, there was a case at the time that went to the Supreme Court. It was called uh, Schenck versus the United States, and the Supreme Court of the United States at the time uh, decided that the Espionage Act of 1917 did not violate right. the, uh, the 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 First Amendment. Provision. And it stands today. And it stands today. Okay. And Mr. Assange is uh, in a two, 2019 indictment that was unsealed by the United States government. Unsealed recently? Yeah, 2019. Okay, it was unsealed. Yeah, okay. yeah, uh, that uh, he, he is um, accused of having violated the Espionage Act of 1970. Okay, how 
What is the U.S. position about how he did that? By publishing through publishing. WikiLeaks. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk about yeah. what's a, what? a couple of right. examples of right. what he Example. published. Exa yeah, uh, was, yeah. So in 2010, uh, under the administration of who, Obama or? At that time, uh, President Obama was the, uh, was the president was the of the United president. States. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in 2010, uh, WikiLeaks published a controversial video yeah. showing the United States military. Helicopters. Uh, yeah, helicopters, soldiers from the, uh, on helicopters shooting at uh, and killing 18 Iraqi civilians, uh, a few of whom were journalists. Uh, from Reuters. For, from Reuters, right, 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 right mm -hmm. no less, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Reuters is English. Reuters right. is, yeah it's, yeah, it's a British company. Yeah. So at the time, the, the, the military and, the, and our government was claiming that this event did not happen. Uh, it was being exaggerated by detractors and opponents of the war uh, and by the enemy. Uh, WikiLeaks was able to secure an actual video of the event. Uh, WikiLeaks also published in the same year uh, war logs from the Iraq uh, war as well as the war that was being prosecuted in Afghanistan to eliminate the yeah, Taliban. Yeah, because the U U.S., but the U.S., remember, was not at war with either of those countries. It was involved in, I guess, I don't know, special operations or something, but we had not declared war anywhere at that point. In 2010. No, I mean, in fact, the last time the United States legally declared war was 1941 right. in the Second World War. So that's one key difference, right? Sure, okay, so go sure. ahead. Uh, so these were some of the things that were published. Right. Uh, the war logs uh, during the, uh, the Afghanistan right. fight as well as the Iraq invasion. And it often provided a lot of information that uh, contradicted what was being uh, released what, to the right. public of the United States. Like what? The, the, uh, the, in terms of how well the prosecution of the war was going, in terms of how well allies were performing uh, in the prosecution of those wars. Uh, simple example in the case of Iraq, well, and Afghanistan, uh, there was information about how surrounding countries or adding to the insurgencies in those two countries, uh, insurgencies against United States, the United States armed, armed, armed forces. Uh, mm -hmm. In the case of uh, Iraq, there were, were disclosures about the involvement of Iran in um, under, you know, sub girding, supporting the uh, insurgency on the streets of Baghdad. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Afghanistan, there were allegations of support from Ira Iran also uh -huh. and Pakistan uh, with respect to supporting and propping up the Taliban and providing okay, right. and sharing intelligence. This was not released to the public, but these were uh, often cables and uh, confidential correspondence. How did he get them? So, in interesting. Uh, how did Mr. Assange get them? Yes, exactly. Uh, so there was a United States uh, military <laughs> analyst by the name of Chelsea Manning. It now, wasn't now his go, name then. Now goes by Chelsea Manning. He was Bradley at the and, time, and, right? And um, uh, she released yep. this information uh, through uh, large uh, exposures and large uh, extractions from military cables that she had access to. And what to. was her position? She was a military analyst. In, in, in Where the was she located? In the intelligence services. Yeah, and she was in intelligence, correct? Yes, correct. Um, and was she located in the United States at the time? I'm, it, or, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't think she was I don't was know where actually. she was physically I, yeah, located. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. She did serve in the Iraq War. Exactly. So there is a possibility exactly. that uh, she was on the ground somewhere in the exactly. Middle East. Exactly, right, right. I think yeah. she was. But anyway, yeah. but she was an American. She was an American citizen. And yeah. Uh, yeah. it was a leak. Correct. It, it, you know, a lot of journalists yeah. receive leaks, right. correct? They have their confidential sources. Sometimes they're anonymous. Sure. A lot of times. A lot anonymous. of times they're anonymous, yeah. so that the, the to protect dicey. that leaker. Of course. Okay, of so course. she then transferred that material 
to Julian Assange. At WikiLeaks, right. WikiLeaks. Right. And he then published it. He published it. Without comment or with comment? Uh, my understanding is without comment. Okay, so what then happened to him? Well, and where was he at the time? Do you know? He was in Sweden. Right. 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 Okay, go on. Uh, so, uh, for, you know, maybe it's just bad luck, but uh, uh, maybe it's ironic, but the same, within the same time frame of publishing the Iraq and Afghan war logs, as well as the video of the, uh, the 18 Iraqi civilians being shot from a helicopter, uh, Mr. Assange was accused of rape in Sweden. And there was an arrest warrant that was issued for uh, an investigation uh -huh. uh, about two, two possible rapes or sexual molestations that he was involved with. Uh, he was placed on bail. He Was he ever formally charged? Do I don't you know. I don't, I don't think so. I don't charged. think so. I think the women dropped yeah. it. It was an investigation. Yeah. It yeah. was an investigation right. Right. that was going on. Uh, so perhaps he wasn't formally charged. I don't think he ever In 2019, was, right. the charges were dismissed in Sweden. Right, right. Uh, but in 2010, uh, he skipped bail. He was placed on bail. He skipped bail and went to England and sought refuge. Can I interrupt you? Yeah. Why? Was he suspecting something was going to happen to him in Sweden that he was trying to avoid? It's tough to tell. I yeah. mean, if, you know, you take one side... And if he was indeed responsible or involved in, uh, you know, these assaults on women, perhaps he was just trying to escape. Uh, the other side of the argument, you know, is that maybe he thought that this was a falsified charge and, and, and an attempt to uh, essentially target him and prosecute him. And, uh, my, and jail I remember him. reading somewhere, and again, this is an allegation, yeah. that the reason he did that was he suspected that Sweden would extradite him to the United States. Yeah. Uh, um, so anyway, that's, so, I, but I, there's I, two sides to that, right? Yeah, there's two, there are two sides. And, it's, and one thing, going back to the discussion of the Espionage Act is that it, uh, in terms of one of its uh, punishments, it carries the death penalty. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, there is so, and European countries don't have death penalties. They don't have the death penalty. Right, exactly. uh, side note, Ethel and Julius Rosenberg were convicted and executed. Right, in the 50s. In the 1950s. In the middle of uh, the Cold for War. For having violated the Espionage Act Correct. in 1917. Right, by giving some kind of nuclear well, information nuclear to, the Soviet, to, the Union, to the Soviet Union. the Soviet Union. Allowing them to develop the atom bomb. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so then, so he skips bail right. in Sweden and leaves and goes to the UK, the United Kingdom. Goes to the UK. And what happens there? Well, he immediately gains access to the Ecuadorian embassy, embassy. to mm -hmm. Great Britain. Exactly. Now, yeah. why? Why did he go there? What's the whole deal with embassies? Because there was one attacked recently. Right. right. Well, right. embassies are considered foreign soil, mm -hmm. and they are not supposed to be violated by the government in which they reside. They right. reside. Right, right. So he went to the, and I think the Ecuador, the country of Ecuador, was under some kind of a favorable government itself that he felt would be favorable to him. Right. And he, uh, the, the government's asylum laws uh, classified, of, of England, Ecuador, I'm of sorry, Ecuador. of Ecuador, classified his claim of uh, political persecution as a valid really? exercise of yeah. asylum. And, and they provided him asylum. Eventually, they even uh, <coughs> extended uh, Ecuadorian citizenship. They did to him. So is is he an Ecuadorian citizen, or was that revoked? Yeah. That might have been revoked yeah. with the current government. So you know, Assange was living in the embassy for eight years mm -hmm. without uh, going outside. Without going outside, if he went outside, he would have been arrested by English police, and he would have uh, been uh, prosecuted for violating the Bail Act. Mm -hmm. of Britain since he skipped bail. Right. In Britain, but what else would have happened to him? Well, then, of course, you know, the, the question is whether or not he would have been extradited to the, to the U.S. United States. Where he yes. would face a crime for which there is a death penalty. There is penalty. a death penalty. There is, uh, and if the charges against him 
under the Espionage Act as well as computer intrusion and hacking, uh, if they were lined up, uh, you're talking about uh, consecutively, it's about a, a 170 five, year. Five, right. Yeah, maybe f 175 year uh, prison sentence. Uh, that would be leveled against him. So he, what happened then? He was in the Ecuadorian embassy until. 2019. 2019, yeah. and then what happens to him? So in 2019, uh, Ecuador, uh, change in leadership, change in to views. Unfavorable. Yeah. To a government favorable to the United States, I right. think. Right. Uh, yeah. And the United States, again, was put, putting a tremendous amount of pressure on all of these countries involved right. to have him extradited. To the States. To the United States. Yeah. And uh, Ecuador rescinded their asylum case, uh, mm -hmm. our offer of asylum, and uh, British police were able to go inside mm -hmm. the Ecuadorian uh, embassy to Great Britain with Ecuador's permission. Yeah, right. And they arrested Mr. Assange for violating the Bail Act, and they incarcerated him. In the Belmarsh prison. Yes, that's where, where he, he has been since? 2019. Now, the interesting thing is, uh, the United States immediately uh, commenced extradition right. uh, proceedings in British courts. Uh, so right now, as you as you've mentioned a couple of times, he's in Belmarsh Prison. Right. Even though his uh, service in uh, violation of the Bail Act, uh, the prison sentence that that comes along with it, it has already been exceeded. Uh, mm -hmm by a, a substantial amount of time. Yes. But he's going to sit so, but he's there. Still in, he's still in jail for a crime for which he would be released if this extradition case was not, you know, being uh, uh, pursued. All right, so States. it is because then of the United States charges that he is in prison yeah, in the, London. Right, the High Court of Great Britain has judged that he is a significant flight risk because he's demonstrated the capacity and the ability to flee, as he did from Sweden to the UK, that he needs to be incarcerated until such time as that this extradition case is her is, is what? completed. Completed. Yeah, the, the the a lower court in Great Britain uh, held in Mr. Assange's favor right. in 2021, and it was appealed. And then it was appealed. So they found him unextraditable uh, in 2021, but the United States appealed it to a higher court, and uh, that's that's where That's it, where it is right now. Yeah. So he was found in 2022 to be extraditable to the United States. 2022. And in 2022. And so he appealed it. He's appealed it, and the latest right now is what the, what the, uh, the High Court of Great Britain, what they're asking for from the United States is assurances <laughs> that he would not be executed and that he would be provided First Amendment protection in any court uh, that has jurisdiction in this case in the United States, even though he's a non-citizen, and that he would be provided U.S. constitutional equal protection under, the, under law. Why doesn't he take it? Why doesn't who take it? Why doesn't, in other words, why then doesn't he get extradited? The United States has been unable to provide credible assurances right. that that would be uh, extended to him. Uh, so right now, in other words, the English don't believe it. The English don't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. At this uh, moment. At this moment, on May twentieth of this year, in uh, about six weeks or so, five weeks, uh, the United St United States attorneys are going to be demonstrating in front of the in in front of the the, the court. Which the court? In the UK High Court. Yeah that um, they will be providing assurances. Ugh, wow. The last set of assurances that were provided, Mr. Assange appealed, claiming that they were not credible right. because they provided a uh, excerpt of a Yahoo uh, news story that was reported during which uh, high-level CIA officers, going all the way up to Mike Pompeo during the uh, Trump administration, uh, talking and discussing about assassinating Mr. Assange. I wouldn't doubt it. 
But that's so, my humble opinion. Right. Right. So so his his Assange's that's, attorneys. That was a good move on his part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Assange's attorneys introduced that material. Uh, the UK High Court has claimed that you know a Yahoo News article is not dispositive, mm -hmm. uh, but it allowed him the grounds to appeal uh, the extradition order yeah. of 2022. So now the United States, next up, next month, will be making a claim that, uh, that they will indeed uh, honor the... Uh, the British court, the, right? Well, no, not the British court, but the assurance of not yeah. executing him if he were convicted of all crimes. Is there any... You know, there are loopholes yeah. in a lot of the language that's been provided yeah, in these right. assurances, and that's what the UK High Court has issues with, and that's why the matter is still on appeal. So, But they're going to give uh, the U.S. lawyers a second bite of the apple and allow them to refine the language of the assurances. What do you think? I know that's your... Opinion, but what he let it's a very learned opinion. So what is what's going to happen to Mr. Assange? Uh, I, I think, think he's going to be extradited. I think Mr. Assange is going to be extradited. I do too. I think you know between solar eclipses and U.S. elections, I think the focus is going to be on you know on other things. I think Mr. Assange got a lot of press in the U.S. media cycle a number of years ago. I don't, th with the election coming up in this country, in the United States, I don't think that this case is going to get a lot of press. And uh, I think there's a, a fairly strong chance that he will be. And there's a done. very strong alliance between the UK and the US. Of course. Of course. And so I believe that the UK will probably do what the US wants. Yeah. Uh, but that's my opinion. I hope that they don't. I hope they do right by Mr. Assange. But my opinion is that the, that alliance is too strong. And yeah, one of the comments that Mr. Assange you know, has made over the years is the incredible amount of uh, pressure the United States yeah. is able to put on its Western European allies. Correct, right. Uh, in, uh, every ma in every way. In every matter. Right, exactly. In one case, when there was an allegation that Mr. Assange was on a... Uh, on a, on, a, on a plane with, at that time, Bavillian, uh, Bolivian President Evo oh, yeah. Morales. Was Assange on that plane, too? It was or not. was it Snowden? Snowden. I'm it sorry. Was Snowden. Snowden. Yeah, right. Snowden, right. yeah. Another uh, an dissenter. The United States was able to uh, ask, uh, they grounded a plane of a, of a sitting president right, of Bolivia, in Austria right. by closing off the airspace in Italy, in Spain, and uh, there was and a third country, too. And they all did it. They, they all conceded and closed off their airspace, so the plane had no place to go. For Mr. Snowden. And, and Mr. Well, he wasn't on the plane. Right. Mr. Morales, the, uh, right, uh, the exactly. sitting president of Bolivia. Well, it was, yes, yeah. exactly. So, so we have a couple minutes left. So in your opinion, in the end, uh, you believe that he will be extradited? I think he'll Do be extradited. Will he face the death penalty? I don't believe he'll pr face the death penalty. However, I, he will his, face his, how many years in jail for this non-crime? Um, in my opinion, it's a non-crime. I, I think there's a strong chance that Mr. Assange uh, will not ever see the light, see of, day. The light of day outside of a, a jail. He's already suffered a stroke. Has he? Yeah, and during a court proceeding. During uh, a court proceeding. During a court proceeding before the UK High Court, and he's on stroke, anti-stroke medication. He's uh, for health. for a waiting period for an extradition case uh, after he's already served his time for violating the Bail Act in Europe. Uh, he spends 23 out of 24 hours in a maximum security prison. He gets one hour of exercise. Does he ever see anybody? He must have. He's got kids. Yeah, his his his. I think that they were fathered in in the when he was in the Ecuadorian embassy, though. Yeah, his uh, his attorney is his spouse. Yeah. Uh, and he has two children, uh, t two kids with her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Kurt. I hope that I wish Mr. Assange well, and I hope you're well too. So thank we'll you, see you in Sandra. about a month. Thank you for watching.